Hello guys, in this video I will show you the AutoSomo DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of two Sintashta individuals. Um, I should say Sintashta periphery culture because this is like the southern border of Sintashta culture. Uh, from Uzbekistan, this is actually a little bit of a strip of land between uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, but this is on Uzbek soil, so this is uh, Sintashta culture individuals from um, Uzbekistan, they are actually related to each other. Let's start with the first sample. This is what he is predicted to look like. With Manashakot, he is predicted to have definitely blue color eyes, Greek shaped nose and blonde hair. Uh, with Snipper Free, he is also predicted to have blue color eyes, blonde hair and white skin. He had blue eye haplotype 1 and 2 and he was heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 3. Uh, he's got definitely pale European skin tone based on his genotype in SLC45A2 and IRF4. Uh, with I2023, he's predicted to have African or Middle Eastern or Estonian eye shape. You know, pretty much the same. African, Middle Eastern and Estonian eye shape are not all that different from each other. It's kind of big eyes with uh, upper eyelids, right? So, um, he's got lighter eye color based on his genotype in SLC24A4. Uh, and with hair ID2023, he's predicted to have straight hair, followed by wavy hair, followed by curly hair. Definitely not kinky hair. He's got heterozygous genotype in drd 2 sprofrenetine pro variation, so he's got one of the European no-go learner mutations, pretty interesting stuff, so relative to everybody who's not a European, he would have decreased risk of schizophrenia and higher likelihood of being a no-go learner. Uh, he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which is once again the most typical genotype in this, in this variation. Uh, various Neanderthals, monkeys, non-humans tend to have A1A1, uh, and A1 genotype tends to lead to... Um, bad avoidance of errors, lower OCD, higher ADHD, all various stuff that has to do with less dopamine D2 receptors. He's got normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors, a pretty typical genotype in this variation of DRD2 as well. Once again, normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors. Uh, TT would lead to more dopamine D2 receptors. And um, he's got this genotype in DRD2, once again, a normal amount of D2 do dopamine receptors. Now A would lead to a decreased re um, amount, Whereas uh, C leads to normal amounts, so he's got normal, pretty typical, stereotypical European or whatever, uh, typical genotype in DRD2. Uh, his heterozygous and comps valmet variation, which means intermediate levels of dopamine, uh, intermediate speed at which dopamine is being reuptaken in the brain. Uh, now, he's actually got this genotype in MAOA, which re reduces MAOA activity, and MAOA is an enzyme just like COMT that breaks up dopamine. So, if you have reduced MAOA activity, that means the breakup of dopamine is slower, and you have more dopamine in your system. So, this is kind of like the Woody Year genotype. It's a very stereotypically European genotype to have, in my opinion. He has got uh, this genotype in MTHFR gene on the first chromosome pair that basically uh, allows him to process folic acid uh, entirely, 100% efficiency in processing folic acid. Uh, some of the other genotypes tend to lead to a lower efficiency in processing folic acid, but in this, in his case, uh, he's got the the good genotype, and he's got the good genotype in this variation of MTHFR as well. Uh, no impaired folate metabolism. Uh, he's got. He does not have the European mutation for lactose persistence. Uh, well. He is a European. In terms of genetics, he is very European, so it's kind of interesting that he doesn't have this mutation. Uh, but I, my guess is that this mutation came about a little bit later in Europe. Um, or maybe it started becoming popular a little bit later, and it came about earlier. But uh, does not have the Arab uh, lactose persistence mutation as well, and he does have the sociopath gene in OXTR. Uh, this is the main variation in OXTR that has to do with sociopathy, and uh, there is another variation that has to do with sociopathy also in XTR, but this one is kind of lesser studied and uh, lesser p -val, all that stuff. Um, this variation is uh, less important. Here he's got heterozygous calls, and he does not have derived EDAR, no East Asian EDAR, no East Asian facial traits such as shovel-shaped incisors, uh, thicker hair, epicanthic folds, all that stuff. For ethnicity, I'm going to start with showing you his G25. He is most similar to Finns and various Northern Europeans with G25, and he is most similar to various Srubnaya or uh, Dashti Kozi or, uh, for example, Sintashta. He's most similar to various, basically, Proto Indo Iranians in the steppe. Uh, before they mix with BMAC, he does not have BMAC admixture, or if he does have, if he does have BMAC admixture, it's a very tiny percentage. Uh, with Eurogene's K13, this is what he scores: 19% West Asian, a lot of West Asian uh, admixture, a lot of South Asian too. He's getting more or less a mixture of Southwest Finnish plus Baloch, 
or North Swedish plus Kalash. So relative to the relative to the various um, North and Europeans, he is shifted towards Western Asians. This is what he scores with the MDL PK11. Uh, 33% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, also 4% Iran Mesolithic, a lot of West Asian like admixture as well. Closest to Srubnaya here, followed by Irish Bronze Age, followed by Andronovo in Neolithic. Uh, and with the Oracle, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Corded Ware Estonia plus Iran Mesolithic, or line number 5 Corded Ware Poland plus Iran Mesolithic. So it seems that relative to the Corded Wares from Poland and Estonia, he is more shifted towards Mesolithic Iranians. You see, relative to various Northern Europeans, this individual has a very significant shift towards South Central Asia, particularly, you know, Tajikistan, Iran, and Pakistan. And you cannot say, you cannot say that this individual is just basically Germanic or uh, similar to North Northern Europeans. He's not. Uh, he's... He's, uh, relative to Northern Europeans, he's very much shifted towards, uh, you can see Shugnan in Badakhshan or Tajiks or Jats from Haryana. And with Harappa World, no Northern European today is going to score 22.7% Baloch with Harappa World. Not, not a single Northern European in the world uh, scores 22.7% Baloch. So we got to stop pretending like these Sintashta people or that, that these uh, Indo-Aryans in the steppe were... Uh, Proto-Indo-Aryans, actually. This individual is not even mixed with BMAC. This is just a Proto-Indo-Aryan in a step. We gotta stop pretending that these Proto-Indo-Aryans uh, were pretty much identical to Europeans because they weren't. Uh, this is what he scores with PANDNA LK10. Once again, you can see a lot of CHG, 34% CHG, and also 7.5% ASI. Uh, not a single Northern European today scores like this, scores these kinds of components uh, at this level. Not a single Northern European's Oracle is looking like Lithuanian plus Brahui or 70% 70, 70 Lithuanian plus 30% Kalash. Not a single Northern European today scores like this with any GED match calculator. So we gotta stop pretending that these uh, Proto-Indo-Aryans in the steppe who did not even have BMAC admixture were any, anything like uh, modern Northern Europeans because they weren't. Uh, and uh, this is what he scores with Pan DNA LK12. Once again, with the Oracle, you can see he's getting modeled as a mixture of Belarusian plus Tajik Pamiri, or Estonian plus Baloch, or Estonian plus Tajik Pamiri. So yeah, uh, pretty much half Estonian, half Tajik uh, is what it seems like this individual is resembling. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, very interesting that he does not score any East Asian, and he does score 5.2% Ancestral South Eurasian. Uh, kind of like an ASI component here, or even more extreme than ASI, seems to be more of an Australoid component rather than an ASI component. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of STEP plus various um, STEP MLBA plus Makrani, for example, or STEP MLBA plus Baloch, but maybe not the best Oracle here. Uh, this calculator really does not have a good Oracle. Uh, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, uh, mostly scoring West Eurasian. A little bit of Sub-Saharan African affinities and a lot of East Eurasian affinities, probably due to uh, ancient North Eurasian admixture. Now let's move on to the second sample. The sample is actually the cousin of the previous guy. Uh, he's got most likely the same Y DNA as him. It's kind of hard to determine because it's uh, not enough information in the file. Uh, he's predicted to have hazel color eyes, Middle Eastern snub shaped nose, and brown hair. With Snipper Free, he's predicted to have green or hazel eyes, red hair actually because of one ginger variant in MC1R, and white skin. Uh, YSEC is giving him a prediction for uh, blue eyes, blonde hair, and pale skin. Now, YSEC is probably wrong here uh, because if you look at his genotype, it's most it's it's most likely that he had some kind of a darker uh, darker pigmentation, maybe hazel eyes and brown hair instead of blonde hair and blue eyes. Um, He's got lighter European skin based on his genotype in SLC45A2 and based on his genotypes in IOTA4, tier 1, SLC24A4, it's likely that he had darker features. When it comes to DRD2 sporofrenacin pro variation, he's actually got homozygous genotype for the no-go learner mutation. He's got two derived variants. He's got two no-go learner variants, very cool stuff. Uh, definitely lower odds of schizophrenia, less dopamine D2 receptors, and more likely to be a no-go learner. Uh, he's got typical or, you know, normal genotype in DRD2's variation that has to do with nicotine dependence, impulsivity, and sensation seeking. Uh, very typical genotype for a European once again, and he's got typical genotype in this variation of DRD2 that has to do with memory and alcoholism. So normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors rather than AA, which would mean less dopamine D2 receptors here. Uh, pretty typical genotype in all of these variations actually, and he's got uh, intermediate dopamine levels according to his genotype in COMT, uh, COMT's VALMET variation. He's VALMET, which means va one 
uh, derived or met or warrior allele. Uh, also pretty typical genotype for a European. Uh, finally, he's got this genotype in MTHFR, which pretty interesting genotype to have because it increases the odds of impaired folate metabolism and it really has to do with how you metabolize folic acid but you can supplement nowadays if you have this issue if you have this genotype you can supplement yourself uh, with folic acid supplements but back in the uh, middle late bronze age maybe those supplements weren't a thing he's got this genotype in the cbs gene which greatly reduces uh, his risk of cleft lip or cleft palate uh, very ugly conditions you can look them up on google and um, he does not have the European lactose persistence mutation in this variation of MCM6. This is the typical variation. There is another variation that's sort of atypical. Uh, this is actually the atypical variation. He does not have this variation either. So does not have any of the European lactose persistence mutation. And this is actually an Arab lactose persistence mutation and he does not have it either. So no European lactose persistence mutation, no Arab lactose persistence mutation. It's possible that he was not even, uh, it's possible that he was lactose intolerant is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, he's got the sociopath gene in this variation of OXTR, the sociopath genotype I should say, TT. And he does not have East Asian EDAR. Uh, not a single derived variant here in EDAR. So uh, no shovel shaped incisors, no Asiatic facial traits. And um, now I'm going to show you his uh, G25. With G25 once again he's most similar to various uh, out of modern ethnicities, various Finnish people and various Northern Europeans. Uh, however, not most similar doesn't mean he's very similar to them, right? Because he's most similar, but he's not exactly like them. And uh, with Eurogenes K13, once again, not a single Finnish person scores 19% West Asian, all right? Not a single Finnish person scores 5.5% South Asian uh, with this calculator. And uh, with the Oracle, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Southwest Finnish plus Tabasaran, uh, which are a group in Dagestan, or Southwest Finnish plus Baloch, or Southwest Finnish plus Brahvi. Once again, not a single Northern European today uh, is going to get these kinds of results with Eurogenes K13. This is what he scores with MDLPK11. Um, you can see he's scoring a lot of EHG, which is really CHG here. So it's 32% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer that he's scoring on top of the 2.6% Iran Mesolithic. So, and also on top of the 4.5% ASI. Uh, definitely very southwestern, very West Asian shifted individual. Closest to Srubne here, followed by Sintashta with the Oracle. And this is what he scores with Harappa World. Notice how he's scoring 22.22.5% Baloch and only 1.5% Caucasian, right? That's because Baloch category here, uh, the, the Baloch group is representing uh, ancient Caucasus hunter-gatherer or Iranian Neolithic shift, whereas the Caucasian group is meant to represent modern Caucasus shift. Uh, so he doesn't have a lot of modern Caucasus shift. He doesn't have like modern Chechen admixture, for example. This is what he scores with Pondian LK10. Once again, scoring 35% CHG and 6.5% ASI here would be very atypical. Uh, it's impossible for any Northern European unless they have some kind of uh, Southwest Asian admixture. And he's getting more as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Makrani or Lithuanian plus Brahvi here. And with Pond DNA LK12, uh, also scoring 3.5% South Asian and 29% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer. Uh, with the Oracle getting modeled as a mixture of Belarusian plus Tajik or Chechen plus um, Estonian or Belarusian plus Baloch. So yeah, relative to the Northeast Europeans, this person is definitely shifted towards uh, Southwest Asians. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. He's scoring a lot of Ancestral South Eurasian. You can see 5.6% Ancestral South Eurasian uh, is... This is actually the reason for a lot of the exotic stuff that he gets in the Oracle here. Uh, but with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Step, MLBA, plus Punjabi, or Gujarati, or Sindhi. Uh, that's because of the South Asian, of the ancestral South Eurasian that he's, uh, he's scoring with this calculator, right? Uh, this Australoid kind of component that he's got. And with uh, Gidrosia K3, this is what he scores. He's scoring 1% Sub-Saharan African, probably due to the affinities between uh, various... Caucasus hunter-gatherers and um, Anatolian farmers to Sub-Saharan Africans and he's scoring East Eurasian probably to the affinities between ancient North Eurasians and various East Eurasian groups. So now, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my video. Goodbye.